no. No, no, no. You don't need to praise your children. In fact, praising children can backfire. It can demotivate them. It can cause them to compete with other kids and siblings for praise. And it can cause them to seek approval from you, to seek external rewards instead of doing something because they're intrinsically motivated. There are better ways to motivate children. There are better ways to get them to feel good about themselves. Children do not need praise. I would say no. You don't need to choose activities that are adapted for a child's age. Not usually is what I would say. Sometimes, and I'll explain in a second. So children do not need age appropriate activities. In fact, they are very well equipped and actually designed to be part of your activities for you to go about your regular life on the weekends and after school, you know, do hobbies, your work, socializing, and let the children join you. Welcome the children into your world. This is how they'll learn to behave and act in the adult world and they'll learn to be part of your team to cooperate with you. Now, once the child is in those adult activities, you might have to make adjustments so that they can do them a little bit, right? So for instance, when we had Rosie and she was three or four, we started hiking with her because we love hiking, but we couldn't go on like a seven mile hike like we used to go on and hike really fast. We had to choose shorter hikes. We had to go a little bit slower. And over the time she learned, you know, she's learned to go farther and she's learned to go faster. So I would say, don't choose, choose activities made for a child's age, but you might have to modify your activities a little bit so they can join you. No, don't need to do that. In fact, you wanna try not to do that. When you yell at a child, when you scream at a child, really all you're teaching that child is to yell and scream when there are problems, when you're frustrated. Um, a much more effective way is to stay calm, is to have a, a soft voice, is to tell children um, explanations in a very respectful, kind matter, manner. That will teach the child to do the same and treat you that way. When you yell at a child or raise your voice, they stop listening to you. Yes, you don't wanna do things that children can already do for themselves. That said, I would say if a child needs help, you know, don't resist that. You know, don't, don't force them to do things independently that they can't really do. Um, you know, if a child wants a little bit of extra help with something or needs a little bit of extra help, just give it to them. What's that gonna show them? It's gonna show them that, hey, we help each other. And that when somebody needs help, they help me. Um, I think also when you resist a child, if a child, you know, is asking for your help and you, and you, re you actively resist it, I think that causes conflict. And I think it also teaches the child like, hey, we resist each other. So I would say, don't do things children can do themselves, but if they need a little bit of help, give it to them. I love this one. No, 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 no. This is a great one because I think often parents are more stubborn than their children. You know, we dig in our heels and we're like, you're gonna do what I say and I'm gonna fight with you till the end. And Parents in many parts of the world are not like this at all. In fact, they give in way easier, right? It's like, it's like, look, I'm not gonna argue with you. This is what's gonna happen and we're gonna do this and you're gonna have to join. End of story. No. In fact, I don't think chore charts work because if chore charts worked, a lot of Children would be way more helpful in Western culture than they are. Here's why chore charts don't work. Chore charts tell a child that this is their task that they need to do on this specific date. And what a child learns is that's the only task they need to do. And so they don't pay attention to what's around them and they don't look out for where they can help. 
They just focus on those one few tasks that they have up on the chore chart. It kind of teaches them not to help each other. It teaches them just to do the task that they're assigned. Also, like I said, I don't think they work. No, no, no. <laughs> Boredom is the best thing for a child. In fact, they are designed to be bored. And if by bored you mean to have to self-entertain, right? Please let your child learn to entertain themselves. We think children need to be stimulated at every moment. We need to lecture them, they need a video, they need a class, they need instructions. And in fact, children need none of this. Left to their own devices, children can figure out what to do for 12 hours a day. This is how they are designed and this is what they've been doing for 200,000 years. Now I will say, you wanna welcome them into your world, right? Let them join you in your errands and your chores, but then let them be. Let them figure out what they, they need to do on their own. Yes, absolutely. In fact, children are always watching us, whether we know it or like it or not. We are always an example to them and we want that example to be good. If you want your child to be calm, be calm. If you want your child to be kind, be kind to them. Don't be stubborn. If you want your child to be helpful, be helpful and welcome them in and accept their help. Yes, be their example. You are their example. Yes, do not spoil them. Expect that they are gonna help. Expect that they're gonna share and be kind to each other. And when they don't, don't tolerate it, you know? If they're not sharing a toy, then the toy goes away. If they're not being helpful, then let them know it. Hey, that's not helpful. Oh, you're a baby? That's why you're not being helpful? You know, make sure they know and expect them to do it. Everyone contributes, everyone helps, everyone is kind and everyone shares. That is what a good family member is. Yes, lots and lots of love. And don't forget the physical love. You know, if they're upset, sometimes all they need is a touch on the shoulder. Or, you know, when I'm driving, sometimes I'll reach back and I'll just tap Rosie on her feet if she's upset. And that's all she needs. It's just a little bit of physical love. Give them a lot of your time, but not a lot of your attention. You know, spend time with them. Welcome them into your world, into your chores, into your hobbies, but then let them be. Let them join you in a gentle way, not a way where you're controlling and micromanaging the occasion or the activity, but you're letting them join in their own way and figure out for themselves how to do the activity with you next to them but on their own. <laughs>